Theresa May failed to realize how difficult Brexit would be and refused a possible breakthrough deal with the Labour Party until it was too late, her former deputy Sir David Liddington has claimed. He said mistakes were made early on in Theresa May's premiership regarding Brexit, adding every prime minister has responsibility for what happens in their government. Sir David criticised her hardline approach to negotiations with the European Union and suggested the former Prime Minister should have reached out to Labour as early as 2016. Mrs May's former deputy was speaking at an event organised by political think tank the Institute for Gov. When asked whether she was to blame for what happened, he said, well, I mean, I think look, ultimately every Prime Minister has responsibility for what happens in their government. I do think the mistakes were made early. If you go back to 2016, I don't think that there was sufficient recognition of how hard some of the political choices in the negotiations would be. I think it is possible, you never know, we are looking at it with hindsight, but it is possible, what I think should happen is there should have been a different approach to the negotiations at the start because I think it would have been possible then to come to the deal earlier. Possibly, you know, an attempt to reach out to other parties early on, saying, this is a national decision, we have had a vote in the referendum, now we need to move forward together, I think probably she, Theresa May, felt that, you know, having supported Remain, that she had to demonstrate her credentials as committed to delivering the referendum result. Mrs. May tearfully announced in June on the steps of 10 Downing Street she would be resigning as Prime Minister, after suffering a series of humiliating defeats in the House of Commons as MPs failed to give sufficient backing to her much-criticised Brexit deal. But just weeks before this announcement, her Conservative Party opened talks with Labour in a desperate attempt to break the Brexit impasse. Sir David claimed the cross-party talks came pretty close to finding a compromise on Brexit. He said, I think, at the end of the day, perhaps late in the day, it was just there was an unwillingness on both sides, I think, to make the fight. The two issues on which it broke down were customs and a second referendum, where we couldn't quite get agreement. The negotiations took place on both sides, with the understanding that this was without prejudice, they would have to go back to cabinet and shadow cabinet and check their view. So, in the room, we said to Labour, look, what we will go for is, what we will offer, is something where both of us can say that our real objective is not prejudiced ahead of a general election, in effect, that meant having what amounted to a customs union with the EU, at least until the general election took place, after which whoever won would be free to do their own thing. Labour did rub our noses in it a bit, and wanted to actually call it a customs union, where we wanted language about the benefits of a customs union, zero tariffs, zero quotas and so on. Sir David also claimed the cross-party talks collapsed due to Labour's continued demands for a second referendum. Mrs May's former deputy said a second referendum was undesirable because of the political damage it would have done would have been severe. He added, the other thing was a second referendum, and we did offer a guaranteed debate and vote at both committee and report parliamentary stages of the withdrawal agreement bill. Labour said that they had to have a second referendum in the bill at the start and the vote would have to be whether to drop it. We just knew that would lose many more Conservatives than you would gain Labour members in the House of Commons. I think that it was going to be difficult for a second referendum to get a majority on a free vote there. My view was always that a second referendum was undesirable, because of the political damage it would have done would have been severe. But had the House of Commons voted for it, I would have then argued OK, we have to live with this. But it was not my preferred option. You could see the tide of the Labour Party shifting, when I talked to Labour MPs in the previous few months, they came to my office and they were saying, look, we'd have done a deal on Norway plus six months ago, but now things have changed within the Labour Party. So, each side had its own dynamic there.